Hi, welcome to the Spare Room Project. This is how to create an old newspaper clipping graphic like this in GIMP version 2.8 for any image where you need your text to look like it was cut out of an old newspaper. Let's get started. I'm going to create a new image, and the size doesn't matter, but I need mine to be 700 by 490. The first thing we're going to do is create some folds and wrinkles in this paper, so create a new layer with that shortcut button and name it Crinkles, just like your uncle's pet pug. And grab the gradient tool here and set the blend mode to normal and use the bilinear shape. Drag it over the image once. Now set the blend mode to difference and drag it over the image another anywhere from 15 to 40 times. You'll notice that every time you do this more of these straight lines and sharp folds are added to the image. Uh, you can also use the radial shape to add some more curves to this uh, just to make those places those is a little more natural and you'll want something with a lot of white space so that looks about right let's go to filters distorts emboss and set the depth all the way down to two okay now let's go to colors curves and set this line to just follow the shape of the color in the graph that'll smooth out some of the wrinkles and make a few of the folds more pronounced Hit OK. Now we're going to clip the shape of our newspaper clipping with the lasso tool. So start up here in the corner and then just drag it on down. The darker the fold is that you run into, the more you have to deviate from the straight to follow it. And you can do this as much or as little as you like, but the more you do, the more of a three-dimensional look you're going to have in the final image. You can use the control key to draw straight lines along any number of angles. And this is pretty white, so I'm going to use that now. And just go across until you hit about the center of the image, which is near here at about 350 pixels. And then just draw the line straight up following some of these folds here. And when you get to about the center of the image again, you want to just jog a bit more downward to show where the scissors might not have cut as cleanly as you'd like. And then drag over to make the second column of text. And again, we're in a lot of white space here, so straight lines. This process is pretty random, so some of them turn out better than others. And as you get closer, you want to make sure that you deviate just enough so that you hit that corner in the top. Congratulations, you have just clipped a newspaper without ever picking up a pair of scissors. So invert the selection with Control i now delete everything around the border. Invert the selection again, and we're just dealing with the clipping. So the next thing we need to add is some background color. Create a new layer, name it background color, what else? And grab the fill tool. And the color we're going to use for this is a sort of sepia yellowish brown that you'll find where the red meets the yellow in the hue slider and where that meets the gray on this. And the color I've been using is HTML CBB D85. So let's hit OK and just fill that in. Now move this layer below the crinkles and set this layer mode to overlay. The problem is that no newspaper clipping gets this old with color that's uniform by hex code, so let's add some more natural irregularities. Create a new layer, name it Plasma, that's where we're going next, and go to Filters, Render, Clouds, Plasma. Any of the random seeds are fine, then go to Colors, Desaturate. Lightness or Lumosity, but not both, since that smooths out a lot of the irregularities that we're looking for. Hit OK, and then set this layer mode to Overlay. Now let's make this paper look like it's seen some things. So add a new layer and name it Stains. And then go to, make sure you reset your colors before you do this. Go to Edit, Stroke Selection, use a line width of at least 9 pixels, and then hit Stroke. Now go to Filters. 
blur Gaussian blur and use a blur radius of at least 75. Now we're going to add some stains with the paintbrush tool and you can get a lot of brushes for this but if you want to use the ones that are packaged with GIMP I recommend texture hose and oils. The key to this is to use a brush size that's pretty large relative to your image and only click any given brush once. That looks pretty good. And then set this layer mode to overlay. Notice that the black around the outside disappears as that layer blends with the background. And now what we have to do is add our text. So I don't know what you need, but I'm going to click the lorem ipsum text here that's used as examples by graphic designers and set a column that follows the shape of the clipping and bleeds over the bottom just a little bit. Leave yourself enough space for a headline. And then just paste that in. Looks a bit big. I'm going to bring the pixel size down to 15. Do the same thing over here in the second column. Set size just to follow your image and make sure that it levels up with the other column of text. Sure, why not? And then we'll add a catchy headline to this. Dead Roman General Speaks. And change this text size until it just reaches the bottom of this box. And then center that. Now the next thing you want to do is make sure that you're not using true black for your text. After all, uh, true black is a bit rough and by now the ink would have faded. So go back to the color that you used for the background and just drag the value down close to black but not quite. So the HTML for this is, this looks good, 332F21. Hit OK. And let's make sure that all of the text is this same color. All right, and now we're going to clip off the text that's hanging over the bottom of the clipping here. So we'll duplicate the text layers and discard the text information and make sure that the actual text layer is invisible. So now invert the selection and you're dealing with everything again outside of the clipping. Hit delete and you'll just clip off the bottom of that layer. Same thing over here. Uh, and now what you need to do is drag all of the text underneath the stains and textures on the image but just above the background color. Notice that uh, it adds a lot more character to the way that text looks. And you're done. If this tutorial was helpful, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials and tips for creativity and limited space from the Spare Room Project. Thanks for watching.